Let's go back to this legislation. We know on the 15th of December, mm. Victoria falls out of its state of emergency if there's nothing else there in a legal sense to replace it. We're told uh, the government still is one vote short, but they're working very hard on three additional crossbenches to the three they've already got. Where is this up to, Matt? So the short answer, Peter, is I'm not sure. I certainly do know that the, the government is working really hard to pressure uh, an additional small group of crossbench MPs in the upper house. And for your viewers' benefit, there are 11 crossbench MPs in the upper house where I sit initially, starting six months ago. Uh, the government negotiated with just three um, consistent Labor voting crossbenches, but they got the numbers wrong because, of course, Adam Somirek, the former disgraced Labor minister, is also entitled to sit in the upper house and he's subsequently come out to say that he'll vote against the legislation. So, so my message to my crossbench colleagues is stay strong, um, listen to your constituents, do what's right, first and foremost, for your constituents and for the, for the people of Victoria. But, but your viewers need to be really clear that no matter, no matter what happens next week in a parliament, every single Liberal Party member and National Party member of Victoria's upper house will vote against these dangerous and anti-democratic laws they could be defeated, Peter, if the crossbench does does the right thing. Um, and I certainly hope they stay strong and do that. And look, just before we go, just quickly, if we get to the 15th and there's no replacement legislation, my understanding is all the health orders fall over and there's no capacity for the government without the cover of pandemic legislation to put in additional health orders to have them continue over the summer. Is that right? So, so my message to Victorians, Peter, would be that we should be we should be calm and prudent about the way we move forward. The Law Institute of Victoria has said some really sensible things about this. We're not about to fall off a cliff. Um, if we need to be able to make sure that, for example, there are rules in place to, to enable people to wear masks on public transport, well, we can do that. But we're reaching very high vaccination rates, so we don't need to rush. We don't need to worry that we're about to fall off a cliff. In the debate in the Upper House just last week, Peter, uh, Fiona Patton, the leader of the Reason Party, said that we desperately needed to ram this law through because if we don't, she said, people will die. There's a great deal of, of fear being whipped up by the proponents of this bill. The Liberal Party will work constructively with the government to make sure that any necessary measures are in place as we move forward. But because we're about to hit 90% double dose vaccinated and because the National Cabinet says that once we hit that mark, well, we should treat COVID like any other infectious condition in the community, we really don't need to overly worry about that. I think you're right. And we can all see this uh, power grab for what it is. Matt Back, as Shadow Attorney-General in Victoria, thank you for your time. Thanks a lot, Peter.